So you voted for Joe Biden? Absolutely. Do you have any regrets at this point? What? What would there be to regret? How do you think his presidency is going so far? Yeah, it's great. I mean, he, like, what a leader. The way he, it's great. What are you most happy with regarding his job performance? Well, if you just look at, like, where do I start? Uh, like, I mean, building back better, am I right? What do you think he's built back better? Well, he's built the Taliban back better, and also like his whole promise about uniting the country, because we've been divided for so long because of Orange Man. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So I think there's no question, he's been successful at uniting us. He's mandating laws that literally segregate society. Oh yeah, yeah, he's doing that, isn't it? Um, but I mean, w with climate change, it really makes it tough, and it's just really part of the process. And he, when you get down to it, you can't really unite everyone unless you first separate out the people that you're not united with. You gotta see the big picture of where he's going with all this. It's kind of like if there's cancer in the body, the problem is the cancer cells behave as though they're separate from the rest of the body. But if you just give it time in our patient, the cancer will eventually take over the entire body and there will be nothing left but the cancer and thus you'll have unity. Do you still believe Biden is the one in charge? He's supposed to be the president, yet he's instructed on what reporters to call on. Someone scripts all his speeches and the White House routinely cuts off the audio feed at news conferences if he starts speaking off the cuff. Of course he's the one in charge. He's the leader of the free world. He's a very powerful man. The president's got a job to do. You've had a job before, so you know what it's like. You know how there's other people at your work. You've got to work together and communicate. And like one of those people, it's like it's their job to tell you what to do. Like a boss? Yeah, exactly. And it's like that for the president. Are you happy with how Biden's affected gas prices, food, the cost of lumber has never been higher, and the rate of inflation's at an all time high? Well, I mean, like sure, there's been a few setbacks, but like if you're doing the things that cause inflation and then inflation goes up, like who can predict that? But. Could you imagine what would be happening in these areas if Trump was still in office? When he was in office, all these areas were objectively better. Well, I mean, I guess they were, weren't they? As a Biden voter, how do you feel about what he's done to Afghanistan? Afghanistan? That's over with. I mean, I don't think there's any point in bringing that up. That's all in the past. No, it's still going on. There's still Americans and American allies that Biden left behind. Well, I mean, the president, he's got a tough job to do. And when he was looking to pull out of Afghanistan and military intelligence would tell him the Taliban will take over the country if you do, I think one would just assume that they wouldn't, but then they did. And it's not that big of a deal. And just like the president's pointed out, the Taliban aren't such bad guys. And I think Biden asking them for permission makes Biden look like a nice guy. And sure, the Taliban are saying no when it comes to releasing Americans, but that's really just cultural differences, right? What would Trump have done? Used intimidation and military force? There is no place for that in the military. And besides, with terrorists, you basically have to let them have control so you can have peace. And that's what Biden's done. What do you think about Biden leaving Americans behind? Well, Americans are inherently racist. Do you think all Americans are racist? Yes, all white Americans. Does that mean that Biden's racist? No, well, no, no, because he's always the one telling other people they're racist. So I guess that means he's the only white American who's not racist. And he's a shining example, because under his leadership, like the NFL now has two national anthems, one for white people and one for black people. And I think if we keep going at this rate, eventually he'll take us to a place where white people and black people don't have to interact with each other at all. That's how anti-racist he is. He wants white people and black people to happily coexist completely separate from each other. What do you think about what Biden's done to the border? Well, that's a complex situation. Just opening the border so everyone can come in. Sure, that puts women, children, and babies in inhumane conditions and creates unprecedented levels of sex trafficking, but there's really no way to prevent that whole thing. Well, he could keep the border closed. I don't think that would work. It worked when Trump did it, and then Biden simply undid it. 
Well, I mean, the way Trump tweeted was so mean and the guy was such a xenophobe and just, I mean, not letting everyone into your country who wants to come in, it's very uninclusive. It's like, say you have a boat that can hold 10 people, but there's a hundred people that want to get onto your boat. What do you do? Of course you let all 100 people on. And yes, that will sink your boat and everyone drowns, but it's the right thing to do. Do you think that Biden's in cognizant decline? CNN has never brought up that possibility even once. So I'm pretty sure that's not what they're telling me to think. It's been discovered that General Milley called the Chinese military and agreed to warn them if the US were to attack. Many would say that's treason, yet Biden still said he has great confidence in General Milley. <laughs> It's no big deal. I mean, that'd just be like, if you're married and you went behind your wife's back with another woman, sounds like fun to me. But in this analogy, I think that we're the ones getting cheated on. Huh. Well, that's much less fun. But at the end of the day, General Milley was just being a nice guy. All he did was aid the enemy a little bit. That's not treason. That's actually the definition of treason. Well. I don't really like to define words. It's a little too binary for where we're at in society. Some people say Biden spends most of his time fear-mongering about the virus, trying to get people to live in a state of fear. How is that helpful to our country? Come on, inspiring people to live in fear? That's the sign of a good leader. Because the more afraid you are, the more protected you are. Leaders who inspire people to get in touch with greatness, not only are they not leaders, they're dangerous psychopaths misleading people. Do you feel good about the White House infringing on free speech as they instruct Facebook on what to censor? <laughs> I say it's about time we have a president step up and protect us from the Constitution. Besides, if you agree with everything Biden says you can say, which you should, because that's what he wants you to do, then you're good. Besides, I don't see how any harm could happen from a little good old fashioned elimination of free speech. Via objective metrics, the country has gone downhill since Biden took office. If he's still alive in 2024, will you vote for him? You mean when he's still alive? <laughs> I think he looks very young for 135. So whether he's dead or alive, of course Biden's got my vote again, because based on the way I let groupthink dictate my actions, He's earned my vote again. And besides, if Biden got us into this mess, then I think there's only one guy who can get us out of this mess. And that's the same guy taking us deeper into the same mess.